Mervoinovich hired a group of young 30-year-olds, all at the beginning of our careers. The energy level was very high. Uh, and uh, as Tom would have put it, uh, you know, we were on a mission from God. He put together a, a great team, and we began almost immediately with the help of a lot of different people in the community. Finance director's position, considering the state of the city at that time, was certainly a challenge and one that I thought I would like to take on. There's a certain camaraderie that developed because uh, there was no money, uh, because uh, we were still the laughing stock of the country, along with other actors in the political realm, uh, key supporters in the business community, said enough is enough, we're going we're gonna to turn this around. Council, administration, city leaders, business, business leaders, uh, community leaders, everybody really pitched in and played a role in getting Cleveland back on its feet. Initially, there was just a pervasive negative attitude. One of the remarkable things that I saw occur over the mayor's tenure was how he turned those attitudes around. You know, he developed this concept of public-private partnerships. I thought it was really one of the long-term keys. He is the author uh, of that concept. People work together, people listen to each other, people collaborate, and people celebrate what they've done together. That's what his faith was about, that's what his message was about uh, when he was mayor, and that's, I think, how Cleveland turned the corner. Politics largely was put aside during the first couple of years of George Fornich's administration because the problems of the city were so serious that we couldn't let politics get in the way of doing what had to be done. From the first cabinet meeting onward, I remember very clearly the mayor saying we were going to spend our time and energy solving problems rather than engaging in political commentary. One of his major contributions, I think, to city governance was that he would not tolerate the usual and customary uh, in-house bickering and fighting. All those internal rivalries that characterized many administrations, he had nothing to do with that, and it was cut that right off. Uh, we were going to lower our voices and we were going to solve problems. And I think that carried through uh, his entire tenure as mayor. He set a very focused and professional tone for all of us. The mayor had this motto of doing more with less. During the default period, it was sort of the ultimate. The first year, we were able to accomplish a lot, but certainly the revenues were not there to support the kind of services that the citizens of Cleveland needed. We did countless rounds of meetings in the neighborhoods until we got to what I came to understand was Planner's Nirvana, which is that meeting where people say, okay, we've talked enough. Can we, like, get on with this? In virtually every area you look, there was need for improvement, and so we had to systematically go through those processes to get the uh, systems, the people, and the information needed to satisfy not only the banks, but of course the George Voinovich and the management of the city. I think just through good management and working with vendors and, uh, and creditors, we were able to, uh, to get through until we reached the point where the default was ended and we were able to, again, borrow money and get uh, our, our financial standing back in the credit markets. My time with, with George Warnovich was Civic Vision 2000. Uh, it's about a five-year effort all in. It's about three years of intense planning. Bob Kilpack heading the business community, downtown plan, and Chris Warren, the firebrand neighborhood activist at the time, heading the neighborhoods and telling them one plan. But that effort, that Civic Vision 2000, which updated a 1959 downtown plan, updated a 1949 down, uh, citywide plan, it set the, set the course for neighborhood development and downtown development that you saw executed throughout the next two administrations. This notion that uh, they used as a campaign theme of together we can do it really was what it was about. It wasn't just a campaign theme to get us to get them through the election. It was the way in which he operated. And I've come to understand that that is an essential part of, of, of community. When there's an issue that's important to the community, let's get into a room at the same table, all the various stakeholders, and let's discuss the problem. Once you get that on the table, you can then begin to figure out how to solve those problems. He would always communicate to people that their ideas, their time, 
it was important, he was there to listen, to try to get people to work together, people to, to listen to each other. And I think that that really was what characterized his uh, tenure. It's, a, it's almost a pastoral uh, ability. He's a great person, uh, a man of uh, great personal integrity, great character, family man, and certainly a great leader. I found him to be an excellent a strategic thinker, then somebody who could take that vision and really figure out how to make government work. He's not like a lot of politicians um, who has two different faces. What you see is what you get. And he's always focused on helping his constituents as opposed to what we see a lot of today, which is a politician doing those things based on what is best for his or her political career.